What's up toes, Camel Hoarder 101 here, and I am back from my trip to Europe that lasted about 10 days. I've actually been back for like two days or so, but if you can forgive me, I've taken a couple days to um, sort of get back into the scheme of things and sort of relax, get over the jet lag and all that crap, and just sort of um, sit down because yesterday I was, I was very grumpy and um, it really did take a toll on my attitude, and I don't want to commentate when I'm in a bad mood because it's just, it's not going to be good for you, it's not going to be good for me, it's not going to be good for anyone, so... I'm feeling a little bit better now, uh, still a little bit tired, but um, I mean, <laughs> when you get back from like uh, like 10 hour plane flight, and then you don't go to bed till like 4 a.m., and then it'll do that to you, so hopefully I can get back into the swing of things, and I know, unfortunately, I was not able to upload videos while I was um, gone on my trip to Europe. For those of you who don't know, I did um, like a tour, like it was an educational tour thing where you'd visit a couple of countries and you like learn stuff there would be tour guides and you know you'd sleep in hotels and um take the train ride from country to country and it was an amazing experience and i don't know if my voice can like project it now because i'm still feeling a little bit tired but it was just a fantastic experience I got to meet some amazing people some hilarious people especially in uh, london the the sense of humor over there is just fantastic it is spot on those guys are hilarious and I don't know, you'd think that they're surrounded by tourists every day, they'd be kind of grumpy, but it's like they've adjusted to that kind of life where people who maybe don't speak their language, obviously London speaks, um, and all of England, they speak in English, their type of English, but um, places like Italy and France, you'd think they'd be grumpy because people are there not speaking their language, and they're just uh, tourists and stuff, but they take it really well, they're just amazing people, and I had the pleasure of meeting a lot of them, so... I'm not going to go into real, I don't know if I'll have time. I might go into some details about the trip. It was really fun. But I kind of want to talk about um, the upload schedule and how it's going to continue. And basically what I told and I said in my last two videos ago, I said that I had 10 videos ready for each day while I was there. But unfortunately, I didn't have the Wi-Fi to upload them. One day, the first day I was there, I tried to get Wi-Fi, and I did. And then I uploaded a video, but then it didn't finish processing. And... It only uploaded the first two seconds, which kind of pissed me off, but, I mean, well, I don't know. It was kind of funny because people were commenting <laughs> on the video and watching it. It was, it was kind of funny. It was a ha-ha. It was a funny ha-ha, not funny uh type of moment. So it was it was a neat experience, but that lack of internet did kind of uh, hinder the uploads. So, like I said, I was back for the past two days, and I just didn't upload because I was really tired. And now, hopefully, we can get back to the schedule. Today will be this video. Tomorrow, hopefully, a pony video. Well, actually, not hopefully. If I have Wi-Fi, for sure, a pony video, in which I will have Wi-Fi because I'm at my house. So, the following day after that, probably a Binding of Isaac, followed by a pony, followed probably by an Amnesia, followed by a pony, followed by a Binding of Isaac, and so on and so on. And the fact that I have these all pre-recorded, I can sort of ease into things and um, maybe every two days do a commentary, which I'll then upload later. And it's just sort of kind of... Um, not have it be as stressful because um one day or the past three days before i left on the trip i was up um not uploading but i was recording like three to five videos a day trying to get 10 videos in advance and now that i have the videos in advance and i didn't use them it's sort of kind of um i've been using ease in over and over again but get back into the experience because i was really tired and um i didn't really i wasn't in the mood to do videos that's like the first time i wasn't in the mood to do videos because I was just tired, and that was a bullshit spawn, but whatever. Um, so, talking about the um, experience itself, it was it was crazy. I had a lot of fun, met a lot of new people, and some people I recognized. Like since it was a school trip, I saw people from my school, and I saw people from other high schools, and that I recognized. And I'm like, well, I know these people, and I'm not not necessarily don't like them, but I I don't know them, so. And then, like, when you have to actually, like, sleep with them, not sleep with them, but, like, be in a hotel room with them and um, go on a trip with them, be on the bus with them, it, it, was a, it was a great time to, like, make friends. And you can't really go into trips like this or any experience like this where you're away from home and, you, and you're just, you're not in your comfort zone. You can't go into that not making friends. You have to make as many friends as you can because those that's what makes the experiences as fun as possible. If I had no friends on this trip, like, well, I came in with no friends on this trip, but if I didn't make any on this trip, I it would have been boring as hell 
Because I, I can say, tell you right now, there was not one time where I was just alone. Unless it was the bathroom. There was not one time I was alone. It was always with friends, and we were always having a good time, laughing it up, and just seeing a bunch of crazy stuff, monuments, so Eiffel Tower, Tower of London, uh, London Bridge, which is very um underwhelming, to say the least, London Bridge. But I'm not going to spoil anything. Just don't... Don't think it's anything amazing, <laughs> um, but lots of insane stuff. And when you um, meet people like, or not meet, but when you see people like royalty, like you see, um, not royalty, but um, just important people. You see like the Queen of England. Um, you see the Pope of the Vatican. You see the, all these people that are like very important. You sort of, um, I don't know you. Everything changes. You feel different and it's it's a good different a good different when you see all this stuff it's like the world doesn't seem as small anymore it's like it's so big and there's so many stuff that you don't see and when you're in the little suburban area or a concentrated city you feel like you know everyone and you got your circle of friends and it feels like a small world but then when you go and you see all these different places all these monuments it just it's such a it's a big world and you you're lucky if you see 10% of it so um i really applaud the people that are able to travel all the time and or envy them <laughs> i envy the people who are able to travel all the time and it's it's just amazing experience aside from the little stuff that's kind of annoying like um you know airplane flight uh, jet lag all that stuff having to adjust to the planes the time zones all that stuff it and I, I felt like us as a group, we took it pretty good. I mean, a lot of us adjusted to the time zones pretty easy. It was a five-hour difference for most of the time. And then once we got to London, it was a six-hour difference. And my favorite by far, my favorite place on the trip was London. It was just the people there were so funny. The tour guides, they had the best sense of humor. And one day, I will never stop telling this joke. One day, um, my friend, he wore a shirt that said, got bacon on the back I, I don't remember what the front said it might have been some company or something but um on the back it said got bacon and our tour guide just <laughs> went up behind him and he's like you shouldn't wear that shirt because <laughs> someone's gonna come up behind you and say don't got any bacon but i got a sausage for you <laughs> so and then he was like poking him and he like whispered in his ear i got a sausage for you and it was just it was brilliant and this guy was hilarious and Oh, and just coupled with the beautiful stuff that we saw there, it just seemed like everyone was there to help, and it was a wonderful experience. And I guess that's going to be it for me talking about the trip. I don't really want to, I'm, I'm probably not boring you, but I don't want to keep repeating the same stuff over and over. Maybe I'll do a different commentary strictly on like every country I visited, because there is a lot of stuff specific to every country, if I could remember the names of the monuments and whatnot. I sort of want to talk about uh, future stuff past the 10 days of um, videos that I'll be uploading soon. And um, I know there's been, there's two games, uh, two Pony Flash games I need to play. They are like huge, huge, huge. Um, and I need to play them, do Let's Plays of them. I, I feel obligated to as a Pony Flash Let's Player. Um, one is the Pony Platforming Adventure, which is... Uh, on its own website, it's not on DeviantArt. It's uh, there's one with Applejack. There's a Christmas edition with Applejack, and then there's um, Applejack and Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. And then there is a Colgate version, and I need to play the Colgate version, especially because um, Colgate is best pony, obviously. And then um, another one that just came out is actually on the Hub website, which is the I forget what it's called I think like Pony 8-Bit Adventure something like that there was a advertisement on the hub that had the game it was a really good advertisement just really big with the fans but I definitely need to let's play that one and that one's really big there's a lot there's like a whole game for each of the six ponies so I'll have to play that and that'll probably be six parts so look forward to that and there is another game that's not pony related that I kind of want to let's play but I'm sort of scared to it's called slender if you've heard of it <laughs> slender you remember slender man I, I did a commentary a while back ago about slender man and just the general creepy pastas type myths and legends that go on around the internet and how they're probably not true but it's fun to believe in them because it gives you something 
um, I don't know, not to look forward to, but it gives you something to fear, and, like, without fear, we don't really, like, everyone has some sort of fear, and I think Slenderman's a really, um, an, an appropriate fear. He's a, he's a really interesting creature, and a game with it, I believe it chases you around or something. I don't know how long the game is, but I'm looking forward to Let's Play that. And in terms of the Amnesia Let's Play, the problem with the Amnesia Let's Play is that I've had a lot of technical difficulties with it. I don't know if they transferred over to YouTube or not, but like when I render stuff and I edit it, a lot of um, FRAP splits up the recordings and it makes it really frustrating, makes render times annoying, and it, um, it's overall I think the quality decreases and um, if I find a more efficient way to make the videos and I, then I think I will um, I will pick up that let's play again and I think it was just starting to like pick up in terms of the game itself so like it was finally starting to get a little scary so I think we haven't reached the the scariest part yet I mean obviously we haven't reached the scariest part yet but if I don't end up picking up the actual game um, actual story I may do some custom map stuff because I don't want to spoil the actual story for anyone uh, that's kind of sort of the problem with let's plays it's easier in terms of stuff like Binding of Isaac because that's not a full like story length game that's just like little playthroughs so um, I don't want to ruin anything for everyone and I guess that's about it videos up and I guess I'll see you guys later if I think I touched on everything I wanted to and uh, the Binding of Isaac in depth I st got a couple of episodes of that I've been off it for a while so hopefully you guys can uh, forgive me if that's what you came here for I, I need to get back into the game the problem with the Binding of Isaac is that it's all random so I can't test like I can't use test stats and do controls uh, control variables and whatnot like you can in Call of Duty private matches I can't do that kind of stuff in Binding of Isaac it's all sort of luck of the draw and I have to record every match so that's about it for me I'll see you guys later hopefully you could stand this long commentary Cam Horta 101 out